Hi, I'm Emily from the Blue Mouse, and today I'm going to teach you how to knit my newest cowl, the Bamboo Cowl. This cowl is super easy. It uses the Bamboo Knit Stitch, which I think is one of the easiest and best stitches to learn as a beginner knitter. Everything you need to know can be found in this video. When it comes to the materials, you'll need a set of US 8 5mm needles in either a 16 inch or 24 inch circumference, which is 40 or 60 centimeters, or whatever size is needed to match gauge. For the yarn, this cowl uses worsted weight yarn, which is sometimes called medium number 4 yarn in big box stores. For size A, which is the sample size, you will need 355 yards or 325 meters. For size B, you will need approximately 285 yards, 261 meters. The sample uses I Love This Yarn, which is from Hobby Lobby, and it is a 100% acrylic yarn with 355 yards, 325 meters per 200 gram ball in the colorway Orchid. When it comes to choosing yarn, you can choose any yarn that will match gauge or at least get very close to matching gauge. An easy way to choose a similar yarn is to choose something with similar yardage or meterage to weight, which is 200 grams as the sample. The sample is 355 yards, 325 meters per 200 grams, so you want something close to that. You can always divide 355 in half to get how much it is per 100 grams, but I recommend choosing a yarn that is within a maximum of 20 to 30 yards, 18 to 27 meters of the sample. So I went through and found some yarns from popular websites that have similar yardage meterage amounts, but as a big disclaimer, I have not used any of these yarns to make this cowl. I cannot guarantee they will work. Everyone has different tension. The only way to guarantee it for yourself is to swatch. That being said, here are some yarns I found that have a similar approximate yardage or meterage per 200 grams. Many of these are more affordable options. In terms of sizing, size A, which is the sample, which you can wear wrapped twice. The circumference is 56 inches, 142 centimeters, and a length of 7.5 inches, 19 centimeters. For size B, which is like a true cowl, it only has one loop instead of wrapping twice. The circumference is 26 and a quarter inches, 66 and a half centimeters, and the length is 12 and a half inches, 32 centimeters. And for the rest of the pattern, sizing will be written out in the pattern as size A first, and then size B in parentheses after it. So when the pattern says to cast on 253, and then in parentheses 119, that means cast on 253 for size A and 119 for size B. The gauge for this pattern is worked in bamboo stitch, worked in the round, and you should get 18 stitches, 24 rounds, equaling 4 inches or 10 centimeters. You definitely want to work your swatch in the round. I have a video all about tips and tricks for swatching, including how to knit a swatch in the round. So you need to cast on a multiple of two stitches. In round one, you're going to work a repeat of a yarn over followed by a knit two, and then pass that yarn over over the knit two and off your needle. And then for round two, you're just going to knit around. So that might sound complicated, but I will teach you how to do that in this video. So don't lose heart if you uh, don't know how to do any of that. To begin this pattern, you need to cast on 253 stitches or 119 stitches. The sample uses the long tail cast on method, but you can use whichever method you prefer. I'm about to show you my invisible join in the round method, but if you don't want to follow that, just make sure you have one less stitch than I said above because the join will decrease one stitch. So here I have all my cast on stitches on my needles. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the whole thing and make sure that the cast on stitches are on the inside here and that nothing is twisted. 
And once I've determined that nothing is twisted, I can go ahead and pick it up and prepare to knit. Now I'm going to show you how to do an invisible join in the round. If you don't follow this method, you'll need one less stitch than I previously said because you're going to be decreasing one stitch when you join in the round, okay? So you'll want your working yarn attached to your right hand needle and you're going to take your right hand needle and go into the first stitch on your left hand needle from right to left basically as if you're going to purl, but keep the yarn in the back of your work. So go into the front loop of the first stitch on your left hand needle from right to left and just lift your right hand needle up to slip it from one needle to the next. And now we're going to go into the second stitch on your right hand needle and pull it over this first stitch and off. Go into the front loop of the second stitch from left to right. And I like to hold on to this first stitch here with my index finger. Go into that second stitch from left to right, pull it over, that first stitch and off, okay? And it's gonna be really loose and wonky like this, but just go ahead and pull on both the working yarn and the tail yarn. You don't have to pull super tight, but you just want to kind of close any loose stitch that you have there, and there you have it. You can go ahead and place your marker on your right hand needle, and you are ready to work in the round. So we're going to knit our first row. So go into the front loop of the first stitch, Kind of crisscross your needles like that, yarn over, bring the yarn from front to back over your needle, pull it through, slide off. And you're just going to do that all the way around this entire row. Go ahead and do that until you come back to the marker and I will meet you back here for row two. And then it's always implied that when you get to the end of a row that you slip the marker. So just slip it from one needle to the next. And now row two is a purl row. You can go ahead and bring your yarn in between your needles to the front of your work and you are ready to work round two. Round two is just all purl stitches. So go into the front loop of the next stitch from right to left, yarn over, pull through, slide off, and again. And that's it, you just do that all the way around the row and I will meet you back here for row three. As always, when you get to the end of the row, you're just going to slip the marker. And for round three, you're going to slip the first stitch and then you're just going to knit the rest of the round. So you're doing this because when you knit in the round, you're basically knitting a spiral because where your row ends, is slightly higher than where your row began. This isn't super noticeable on like a stockinette knit round, but on purl rounds, because you get these ridges of purl bumps, it becomes quite noticeable in the round. So we slip the first stitch of each knit round to even up these purl bumps, okay? It just makes it look a lot neater. So keeping the yarn in the back of your work, you're going to go into the first stitch as if to purl. So go into the front loop of it from right to left, and you're just going to slip it to your right hand needle. So just slip it on over. And then you're just going to carry on knitting the rest of the round. So go into the front loop of the next stitch as if to knit. Crisscross your needles like that. Yarn over, pull through, slide off. And you just keep doing that. Just knit all the way around. And it's as simple as that. And once you finish round three, you're going to repeat rounds two and three an additional three times for a total of nine rounds. And I will meet you back here for round 10. After you've got done with your nine setup rows for your garter edging, it is time to start on your stitch pattern. For round 10, you're going to work a repeat of a yarn over followed by a knit two. And then you're going to pass that yarn over over the knit two. That might sound complicated, but I'll break it down for you. So to begin, you're going to yarn over, bring the yarn over the right hand needle from front to back. And I find it's easiest to hold it with my index finger on my right hand. And now you're going to knit two. So go into the front loop of the next stitch, as if to knit, crisscross your needles, yarn over, pull through, slide off, and again. All right, and now you're going to go into the yarn over, which is the third stitch on your right hand needle. And you're going to go into it from left to right into the front half of it, okay? And I'm going to hold on to these two stitches with my index finger so they don't go anywhere. And I need to use my thumb a little bit to keep this on my left hand needle, but I'm going to pull this yarn over, over that knit two and off. And it should look like that. And that's it, that's the repeat. So a yarn over followed by a knit two, and then you pass that yarn over over that knit two. So I'll show it to you one more time. So you're going to yarn over, take the yarn and go from front to back over the right hand needle. And I find it helpful to hold it with my index finger. And now knit two. So go into the front loop of the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, slide off, and again. And now this third stitch on your right hand needle, which was the yarn over, you're going to go into the front loop from left to right with your left hand needle. Hold on to these two so they don't go anywhere. And you might need to hold on to the yarn over with your thumb. And pull it over those knit stitches and off. 
After a while, it'll start to look like this. Go ahead and do that for the entire round and I will meet you back here for round 11. For round 11, it's super simple. You're just going to knit to the beginning of round marker and then slip that marker and that's it for your repeat. You can just go ahead and repeat rounds 10 through 11, an additional 13 or 28 times for a total of 26 or 56 additional rounds. So again, size A is 13 repeats and size B is 28 repeats. And I say additional because you have to work round 10 and 11 once and then after that, it's an additional 13 or 28 times. For your end garter edging, since it's basically the same as your beginning garter edging, you'll be repeating a few rows you've already worked. So I'm not gonna walk you through them because of that. You can go ahead and rewatch rounds two and three if you need to know what to do. I've written them down at the bottom here so you can have a refresher on what they were. But go ahead and repeat rounds two and three four times for a total of eight rounds of garter. And that's it, you're ready to bind off and I will show you how to do that next. You can do any kind of standard bind off that you prefer, but I am going to do a purl bind off where you purl two stitches and then you pull the second stitch over the first and off the needle. So go ahead and bring your yarn in between your needles to the front of your work. You're going to go into the front loop of the first stitch on your left needle from right to left and you're just going to purl it. So yarn over, pull through, slide off and do that one more time. Into the front loop from right to left, yarn over, pull through, slide off. And now you're going to go into the second stitch on the right hand needle and you're going to go into the front loop of it from left to right and pull it over this first stitch and off the needle. So go into the second stitch here from left to right, just into the front loop. I find it helpful to place a finger on this first stitch here so it doesn't slide off. And you're going to pull that second stitch over the first and off. And now for the rest of your bind off, you're going to purl one, Find one off all the way around. So go into the front loop of the next stitch from right to left, yarn over, pull through, slide off to purl it, and then we're just going to repeat that bind off process. Go into the front loop of the second stitch here from left to right, hold on to this first stitch with your finger, and pull that second stitch over and off. And you're just going to do that all the way around until you have only one stitch left. So go ahead and do that and I'll meet you back here for the end. So once you get down to one stitch on your needle, you can go ahead and cut the yarn, leaving a tail long enough to weave in later. And then you can just take your needle and pull that stitch all the way out. Don't worry, it's not gonna unravel or anything. So you might notice a gap here, okay? It's a little bit more noticeable from the back side. But there's a dip here from where we finished our bind off and where we started our bind off. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a fake stitch in between the beginning and the end of your bind off so that you can kind of join the two ends together and make it look more natural. So what you'll want to do is thread your tail yarn through a yarn needle. And it's a little bit easier to tell from the back side. So if you flip it over, you might be able to see a line of Vs. So typically when we knit a stitch, you can see the V's like this, but when you bind off, you're pulling one over the other, so they go this way instead, okay? You might be able to see them here. Here's one, here's one. So we're just going to follow that all the way over to our beginning of our round. So if you'll notice here, this is the beginning of our round, this whole column here. So we go up to the top of it, and since it's a purl bind off, it's a little bit hard to tell. So here's our right leg. You can see it right here. Since we have two left legs here, there's one, here's one. It can be a little bit hard to tell, but the one that we want is right next to the second one here. So if we just go one right over, we can find it right there. I have a more in-depth video on this if you wanna watch the whole thing, but just find a really clear one and move over until you get to the beginning of the round. Here's another clear one. And then this would be the next clearest, and this is our last full one before we have this gap here. So you're going to take your yarn needle, and just like I have, go underneath both legs of that V of our bind off stitch, right? And from front to back, pull that yarn through, and it will kind of pull the other side towards you. So you want this length here to be about the same width as all of these stitches here because you want it to blend in with all of these. So make sure the tension is about the same there as all the others. If you need to loosen it, just pull up on it. If you need to tighten it, just pull on the working yarn. So then we need to look at our last bound off stitch, okay? Which we can see looks a little bit scrunched, but you can see both legs of it right there. 
it is a V and there is a left leg and a right leg, we're going to go down through the middle of it. So you see where this string comes out of? That's essentially what we're going to go down through. So if it's a V like this, you're going to take your needle and go through the middle and out the back underneath the right leg. So through the middle and out the back. And then you just pull it through. And again, you want this stitch that you've created to be about the same size as all the others. So now you can see it creates a much neater finish. You can almost not tell which one is which. Now, because we're working purl stitches in the round, it's a little bit wonky because you have a jog here. So if it was just plain stockinette in the round, it would look much neater, but this is much neater than it would have been otherwise. So now you're just going to weave in your ends. So I've flipped my project over and I'll show you quickly how I would weave in my ends. There's no right or wrong way to do this. I change it up every time depending on, you know, what looks best to me in the moment. So again, remember you don't want to go just straight up or just straight horizontal. You want to go a little bit diagonal. So I'm just going to, you know, go underneath a couple of these loops and I'm going to go underneath this whole stitch here. See how I went underneath both legs of it? Pull through. Just go up through the bump next to it. And then I'm going to go underneath this one. There's not a whole lot of um, thought put behind this. I usually just do whatever, you know, feels like it's going to be secure. And I'm going to go up a little bit to make sure it goes a little bit diagonal. So really you're just kind of going underneath certain stitches, underneath certain pieces of yarn. It doesn't have to be super methodical. So I went a little bit this way and then I went a little bit up and to the left. Okay. So now I'm just going to take my yarn and go back down and I'm just going to split a couple of these stitches. Okay. So if they have like, three or four plies that make up each strand of yarn. I'm going to go in through part of a strand instead of the whole thing and split it. And then you can kind of tug on your project to make sure that end is nice and situated in there. And then you can cut the yarn close to the end. And there you have it. It doesn't look perfect because it looks a little bit weird when you do purl rows in the round, but it looks much neater. And you can see that we have at least a straight line here. Okay. It doesn't dip down. So you can go ahead and weave in your end on the other half, block your project, and you are good to go. It's ready to wear. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this pattern. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments, and I'll see you guys in the next video.